Hello, this is HowStreet.com video. I'm Sterling Fox in Vancouver today with portfolio manager Adrian Mastracci, who is president of KCM Wealth Management. Adrian, good to talk to you again. Good to see you. Thank you, Sterling. I wonder, should we even be talking? As we go to tape with this conversation, it is 80 years to the day of the big crash of 1929. I think it's awfully courageous of you to come out and have a conversation on anything related to money. How auspicious a day is this? Well, it certainly is uh, one, one long anniversary here. 80 years uh, is a long time. And uh, back in the days when uh, they had the biggest bull market just before the crash, not many people know about that, but they had the biggest bull market, which then, of course, got erased by the crash. And it wasn't until 25 years later, after the start of the crash, that it didn't come back to the same levels as before. Well, the Roaring Twenties indeed had market prices and everything was roaring, wasn't it? And it took 25 years after the big crash to return to those pre-crash numbers. Is that true? That's true. It, uh, that, that's what it was. September, 2000, September 1929 was the high. And in 1954, they had the next same high. Should we extrapolate from that? We're not going to see any fun around here until another 23 and a half years. Is, is that a, that's a clock I don't particularly want to watch. I don't want to watch it either. I hope not. I don't think we have to extrapolate anything from, uh, from those days. Times have changed, that, and uh, we get to move on a little faster. I think so. Times uh, certainly have changed. Uh, we are in different uh, times today, and we have different things that are uh, a problem for us, but uh, I hopefully don't have to extrapolate 25 years. Well, here's hoping. Let's talk about, uh, you're a portfolio manager. You have quite a, a list of clients whom you counsel on a regular basis. And uh, clients, like everybody else in the marketplace, are affected by 24-hour news cycles, if anything, a surplus of information, or perhaps, Adrian, misinformation. In the midst of this flurry of activity, this blizzard of economic information we see and hear every day. How do you counsel individuals to conduct themselves through this maze? Well, one of the big things is to look at yourself. Think about yourself. Forget about the markets if you can. And one of the things that you have to do is ask yourself, when do I want my portfolio to come in and provide me an income? Is it five years, 10 years, 20 years? How much do I want? Uh, do I want it for me and my wife, let's say? So these are the things you start with because the next question after that is should I be protecting what I've got or should I be growing what I've got? And those are two different portfolios. Once you decide on that particular uh, idea, then the question is what kind of a mix should I have? What sort of a, uh, uh, what, 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 what sort of mix, mix uh, makes sense for me. What kind of uh, things can I sleep with at night without having a problem? So now we're talking risk, tolerance, and risk. comfort zone, right? Exactly, and it's all about the risk, especially if you are in retirement or about to be retired. You don't want to take any more risk than, than you necessarily have to, but you certainly have to take some because without risk you have, you have no return. Now you have a newsletter which I've been reading for years along with your mm -hmm. client list. You, you tend to conservative investment vehicles. Even with that even-handed approach, I'm wondering have you had any or many clients in through this recession and the crash and all the rest of it say, look, uh, Mr. Mastracci, I appreciate your advice and all that you're doing for me, but you know, this is just too much for me. I'm taking my money out and I'm parking it on the sidelines. See you later. Well, as a matter of fact, I've taken the, the lead on that. And back in uh, 2006, I went to every client and, and I said, I think the U.S. is going to have a problem or two. And if I'm right, maybe you, you'd like to rethink whether you should be in the normal mix, 50-50 or something like that. Or do you want to simply take some of the equities off the table and slide back into cash? And many of them went to cash. So that, that, that is not a problem for me. And the question really is, what are you comfortable with? So if you're only comfortable with cash, so be it. Okay. If you're comfortable with 60% in equities, so be it. What is the riskiest? Because you're all about risk and your clients rely on you to be accurate in de defining risk in various uh, uh, vehicles that they're looking at. What is the riskiest sector out there right now, one that you basically avoid all clients, uh, ask all clients or recommend they just take a pass? 
Well, one of the difficulties is to actually exclude the, uh, the sector. You could say maybe consumers, uh, the consumer sector is, uh, is one to avoid because we may not have strong sales, especially between here and Christmas. But the difficulty is trying to exclude that. So what you try and do is you try and be diversified all across so that uh, whatever sector you're, th you're thinking of does not make the bulk of your particular investment and therefore isn't going to affect you too terribly hard if it, uh, if it dies. A lot of your clients are internationally based, uh, dealing with imports and exports as part of their ways and means of making money. The Bank of Canada has been quite vigorous these past few days uh, in its uh, statements about the Canadian dollar, which is, as we speak, around mid-90s range. What, uh, what do you see for the, the loonie, Adrian? Well, currencies can certainly um go up a lot faster than they come down at times or the other way around. Uh, we've come a long way in a short time, so anybody that exports out of Canada has a problem. And anybody that imports is uh, sort of wringing their hands right now. On, on the other side of the coin, the U.S. is the exact opposite. The exporters are having a great time because their dollar is low. Importers are having a heck of a time because they're having to pay the higher prices. So in terms of uh, what you have to do, Let's say you're a Canadian and you're, and you're looking for a little bit of a U.S. cash flow, U.S. investment. Maybe now is a, not a bad time to take some of your Canadian dollars, change them into U.S. dollars, and invest uh, uh, down in the U.S. Maybe you've got a child that's going to Harvard and you know what the tuition is like. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a good time to change some of your Canadian dollars into U.S. for that tuition. Is it wise to be keeping a, a, an eye, a, given the volatility, especially of the U.S. dollar, on that radar screen to check it periodically just to keep, keep your place in line, so to speak? I would say if you make the trades that you're going to make on the currency over the next three to six months, you're probably going to hit a reasonable average between now and then. It'll be something like dollar cost averaging. Why is it important to you, because you spend a fair bit of time on this, and, and unfortunately this is all we have time left to talk about, but it's important because you think it is. Why is unemployment numbers versus job creation numbers as important as it seems to be for you, and particularly as you advise your clients? Why the emphasis? Well, the emphasis is such that in the U.S., for example, they need about 150,000 new jobs every month just to keep track uh, of the population increase. So, so far, we've had about 7.2, 7.3 million jobs lost. Yeah. So we've got a big hole that we've dug for ourselves, and therefore we have to get over that 7 million plus number of jobs before we can do anything. Our companies that are creating jobs, very quickly here, uh, last question, uh, are companies that are actively creating jobs, that are kind of standing out from, from the rest of the crowd and therefore interesting from an investment perspective? I don't pick them um, one by one because it's always very difficult to pick the exact one. But there are very few employers now actually bringing on people. There's a lot more of the other ones taking people off the payroll. So one has to be really careful, careful when you look at uh, picking individual companies from that sort of list. Adrian Mistracci, president of KCM Wealth Management in Vancouver, British Columbia. Thanks for this. It's good to talk to you. We, we must do this again soon. Thank you, Sterling. Comments made on House Street Video and HowStreet.com are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at HowStreet.com. House Street Video is a production of House Street Media Incorporated.